Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. So I have a great new book for you and it is by Jan Brett. Now Jan Brett is one of my class's very favorite authors. We love her pictures, we love her stories, we learned a lot about her back in December, but this is a spring one and it's called Hedgie's Surprise and everybody in my class knows and now everybody in Mrs. Ferreira's and Mrs. Bowen's class is going to know that hedgehogs are my absolute favorite animal. So there is Hedgie. Hedgehogs are also Jan Brett's favorite animals. Now, as I read this story, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about who the characters are. I want you to think about the setting. I want you to be able to summarize it when I'm done for one of your grown-ups or a brother or a sister. Now remember, when you summarize something, you tell the main ideas, what happened, the main characters, I know you can do a great job with it. And think, is there a problem in this story? And there's a very big problem that I think you'll see. So here we go, Hedgie's surprise. And remember, sometimes in Jan Brett stories, she gives a little preview in the side corners. So watch and see if you can see that. Once there was a speckled hen who laid an egg every day, only to have it taken by a little Tomton every morning and the little Tomton is over here and he's kind of like a troll. It all started because the Tomton got tired of porridge for breakfast. Porridge is like oatmeal. Each morning the rooster crowed as the sun came up and Henny knew the Tomton was on its way. So did the little hedgehog who lived nearby. You can see him, he's in the corner. She's telling her other story in the corner of her book. The Tomton always called out to her, Honey, have you got a little yummy for my hungry, hungry tummy? He's a rude little Tomton who took something that wasn't his. The Tomton climbed into the hen house, took Henny's warm, smooth egg, and ran off to cook it in his little kettle, sprinkle it with salt, and gobble it down. Then he fell fast asleep in the hayloft until evening, and there's his little kettle. If you look over here, you can see that Hedgie is looking, and I bet he's not very pleased with that little Tomton. Honey didn't like the Tomton taking her eggs, but she put up with it until one morning when she saw Goosey Goosey sail forth, smiling and bowing with a stream of piping goslings following her. A gosling is a baby goose. So there they are, all lined up. Oh my, Henny clucked, where did all those little ones come from? My eggs are hatching, crooned Goosey Goosey. Here comes the last one now. From that moment on, Henny wanted a brood or a group of peeping chicks of her own. But how could she stop the Tompton from taking her eggs? The next morning, when the Tompton poked his head in, Henny tried. She clucked loudly and pecked. She flew at him, but nothing stopped that hungry Tompton from taking her egg again. So look at him. He snuck in, he took her egg, and off he went with it. And there's Hedgie looking at what's happening. No eggs, no chicks, no peeping babies. Henny wailed so loudly that she woke up the little hedgehog, her tears pouring down on top of him. So she sat on top of his house. Puff a puff a stick a stick a hedgy went as he crawled out to talk to her. Poor Henny, I've been watching the toad and take your eggs. I'll help you trick him into stopping. And there he is, laying there just resting. Now, I want you to think. You can tell a sister, a brother, a grown up. I want you to think what Hedgie could do to stop the little Tomton from trying to take those eggs. So think in your head and tell your grown up. The next morning when the rooster crowed, there was the Tomton. Honey, have you got a little yummy for my nearly empty tummy? Honey and Hedgie were ready. The Tomton reached for an egg and pulled out an acorn. Hmm, said the Tomton, what's this? And off he went to try it. The acorn was tasty, but it didn't fill him up and he awoke in the middle of the afternoon grumpy. So look, all he got was that little acorn, no egg.
but he still looks a little happy. The next time the Thompson arrived looking for an egg, he found a bright red strawberry. It looked bigger than the acorn, so he ran off to cook it. The strawberry was jammy and sweet, but only filled up the Thompson a little more than the acorn had, and he woke up early. So there he is, and there is his pot, and there is Hudgy, along with the honey, and you can see that they are looking and probably very happy that he does not have their egg. The sun had just come up when Thompson was at the hen house again, his stomach roaring with hunger. Pushing Henny aside, he grabbed for an egg, only to find a delicious smelling mushroom. He raced off to cook it, and as scrumptious or delicious as it was, he woke up with his little tummy growling for more. And look, they're having another conversation. I don't know, I think he's getting a little upset. If you wanna stop the story for a minute, Brainstorm. Think of why you think he's upset and what you think he might do next. Tell a grown-up or your brother or sister. Cock-a-doodle! The Thompson rushed in even before the rooster finished crowing. Henny, have you got something for my hollow, hollow tummy? This time he found a smooth, round potato, even bigger than an egg. He cooked it quickly and swallowed it down and went back to his hayloft. He woke up at sunset only half full. The Thompson had had enough. Henny, he shouted, tomorrow I want an egg for my breakfast and nothing else. If I don't find one, I'll eat you up instead. Oh, now he's really mad. So now Henny has to give him the egg or he's going to have her for his breakfast. And you can see him having a little temper tantrum over here. And poor Haji, we didn't see this picture. There he is digging up the potato. He's a good friend, though, trying to help his friend Henny. Henny was scared. The Thompson had been tricked by an acorn, a strawberry, a mushroom, and a potato. How could they fool him again? Don't worry, Henny Hedgy told her. Now it's time for my surprise, and he whispered in her ear. All night, Henny waited on her nest, Hedgy on his. As soon as it began to get light, Hedgy gently covered his nest with straw and got ready for the surprise. So look it, he crawled in right under Henny. So think in your head, what do you think might happen next? And there he comes, it's still dark out, it's bright, it's early, early in the morning and there he goes. Henny and Hedgy could hear the Thompson's stomach rumbling like thunder a mile away. He burst into the hen house, pushed Henny aside and grabbed, ow, he howled, ow, ow, puff a puff a stick stick. He clutched Hedgy and closed up it. He clutched Hedgy as he closed into a round ball of needle sharp prickles. So there he got what he asked for. He put his hands in and got a whole handful of prickers. Henny and Hedgy listened as Thompson ran home yowling. Thank you, Hedgy, Henny said, looking for her dear friend. I'm sure that Thompson won't be back again for any breakfast. But what I can't figure out is where have you hidden my eggs? All right, think in your head, where do you think all the eggs are? Remember, he tricked him with an acorn, a strawberry, a mushroom, a potato, but where are the eggs? Just then, Henny heard a little peep, then another coming from Hedgie's nest. She looked over and saw the straw begin to move. Five baby chicks peeked out of their shells and fluffed up their down, down as their little feathers when they're born. As Henny settled down with her babies nestled around her, the Thompson's mother was in the hayloft making breakfast for her hungry Thompson. Hedgy, 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 you are full of surprises, Henny said, as she let her baby chicks out in the sunshine. But the little Thompson didn't hear a word. He was sound asleep his tummy full of tasty porridge. All right, so I hope you loved that story. I hope you thought about all those questions. And now that the story is done, I want you to summarize it. I want you to tell a grown up about the setting, about the characters, and about what happened. And I have one more thing for you to do. So take a peek over here. All right, friends, you know we've been learning about how to alphabetize words. If you can't remember, I want you to listen carefully. When you alphabetize words, 
you look at the very first letter of each word and you start with your alphabet. You could write your alphabet across the top of your paper. Start with A. Look for your A words. If there aren't any A words, go to B words. Oop, there's a B word. Oh no, there's a B word. There's a B word. There's a B word. Now remember, if the first letter is the same, look at the second or third letter. So when you get to B's, you want to look at the second letter. B-I, B-U, B-U, B-L. So you know that I comes before L, so bird would be your first one. Then you want to look at the next ones. You've got a U, a U, and an L. You know L comes next in the alphabet, so after bird, it would be blue. Now this is a little tricky. They both have Bs, they both have Us, so look at the third letter, a G and a T. G comes before T, so bug would be next. See if you can write these words in alphabetical order. Have your grown-up help you or an older brother or sister. When you're done, the last thing, I want you to write descriptive sentences for five words. So pick your five favorite words and write a sentence with a descriptive word in it. Don't just say, I saw a bird. How about, I saw a bright blue bird flying in the sky. Or I saw a beautiful brown nest high in a tree. So write five sentences and then draw a picture. So have someone help you with this. You can stop, you can look at it, and then you can do your work. So hope you are all doing great. Take care, work hard, make sure you're doing Lexia and Zern, and don't forget to be reading. We miss you guys, bye-bye.